morning, everyone. It's good to have those people that are uh, joining us in for streaming, or maybe you're going to watch the video just a little bit later uh, in a recorded form because you weren't available during the streaming time. But today in uh, the administrative office in Santa Clara, we have a whole group of people with us. We're actually right in the middle of filming for our upcoming events that are gonna be happening in September. We're excited, we're gonna be doing a hybrid of events. We're gonna have live events as well as the recorded events like what we did last year if you happen to have been around at that particular time. So we're pretty ex excited about that. And so I have the great privilege of not only talking to all of you that are listening to me right now, but to a larger group of people that are uh, here listening to what I have to say today. Now, I, I want to preface this, and I do this from time to time. If you've been here, you know this. If you've heard me, you know this. I'm not the best speaker. I'm not the one that always has the greatest message. There's probably people in this group that could speak much more eloquently than I could. But you have to understand, when God gives you a position or God gives you a particular task, and that's your task to take care of, and it's your responsibility to do that, then you do certain things that are expected of you in order to fulfill that. So myself, uh, along with Dana, we run this organization, and good or bad, in your opinion, it's what we're destined to do. And so I come to you not in any sense that I have something tremendous and just earth shattering to share with you, but simply as my God given duty to help guide us and direct us to the best way to look at how to serve God in the ministry of Teen Challenge. Well, with uh, our theme, probably you've already heard the theme. If you haven't, shame on you because it's all over the media. But uh, our theme is fearless. And as I mentioned, we're already filming that right now. In fact, uh, yesterday and continuing today, we're going to uh, film, continue to film that. Um, and you're going to get to see the results of that soon. We're using the theme verse... 2 Timothy 1.7, and I'm going to just read this to you uh, here quickly as an introduction, and then I'll circle back a little bit later towards it. First, or 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. That's from the New King James uh, in this, and we'll go to uh, another translation that's more popular today uh, and kind of explain why they've used different words in what they describe here. First of all, though, we want to talk a little bit about fearless. How many of you have ever heard of the slogan, No Fear? Well, you've been under a rock if you've never heard that. Uh, it was a common slogan that started in the early 1990s, went throughout the, the 1990s into the early 2000s, and actually it was a company, it was an apparel company, and they used the slogan, No Fear. It was um, founded by, and the owners were actually motocross uh, bike racers. And that was their whole theme. We've got to go into this, and, and we've got to just go into this with no fear. And so they made this apparel um, to go along with that. You may have also, I think they still have it, uh, Sobe does the no fear uh, drinks, energy drinks. Shame on you if you're using energy drinks. But uh, it was the no fear energy drink done by Sobe. Sobe is a, a, a drink company, and they partnered with the No Fear uh, company. So we get the concept. We get the idea. And it, there's a sense of urgency about not having fear because we know that fear limits us, everyone. And when we, are de when we look at this as Christians, as God-fearing Christians, then there's the sense that we really, more than maybe anyone else, 
We have to approach life without fear because we have the Holy Spirit behind us. Um, how many have ever heard of the author Lee Childs? Lee Child. Lee Child wrote a series of books, and I think he's still continuing the series of books about um, a, a troubled uh, post-military veteran uh, named Reacher. He's actually got a first name, but they never really disclose his first name. But they, in one of Lee Child's books, he's talking about the, uh, having a discussion with the, uh, uh, with the character Reacher. And it's about fear. And Reacher, and, and he's, he's a make-believe figure, uh, but he, Reacher said, you know, most people's reaction to fear is to draw away from it, to run from it. Something fearful shows up and we shy away from it. He, uh, but Reacher is described as an individual that linked into fear. Well, that's really not natural, and so he becomes almost a supernatural type uh, figure, uh, not like Marvel or, or, or anything like that, but in the sense, if you've read the books, he's basically going through life, always rooting for the underdog, uh, but he says he's a very troubled individual. Uh, in this, but his reaction to fear was to uh, to lean into it. Um, Taylor Smith has a whole album called Fearless. She does. She created the album and then went on this huge tour of uh, the Fearless, and then she had a kind of a following falling out with one of her managers that was trying to force her into a contract, and that contract. Uh, would eliminate or really restrict the amount of money that she would make. Well, she did this tremendously unexpected uh, action, and she re-recorded, remastered all of her um, music, a uh, whole album, into uh, something slightly different, so that no matter which version version was. Uh, used, she would make money from it. Well, that was a very courageous move on her part. I just pulled up a, a, something, that, something that she had to say about her album. She said this, uh, this album is called Fearless, and I guess I really would like to clarify why we chose uh, that particular title. To me, Fearless is not the absence of fear, it is not being completely unafraid. To me, fearless is having fears. Fearless is having doubts, lots of them. To me, fearless is living in spite of those things that scare you to death. Mm -hmm. Well, that, she said that pretty good uh, in that. Um, more or less, the opposite of fear is courage mm -hmm. or bravery or being courageous. Uh, I, I don't know if there's exactly an opposite to fear, but that's probably the closest that we can come. And if you want a very interesting Bible study, check out cur courage throughout the whole Bible. Time and time and time again, God speaks through his word about being us being courageous, having courage, having courage, confidence in his direction with that particular mindset it's always understood that God wants us to actually go towards the things that uh, that make us afraid it's human nature to avoid those things that are fearful but it takes a tremendous amount of human courage to tackle those things that are difficult to tackle. Then you combine it with the power of God in our lives, then suddenly the things that we are willing to tackle change. Mm -hmm. We're willing to take on a greater load. We're willing to see things from a different perspective and tackle some things that we would never have dreamed doing before we became followers of Christ. In that, we're kind of compelled by the Holy Spirit to stand up 
for righteousness, to stand up for the things that are good in life, that are, that are demonstrating the goodness of God, and to kind of stand against those things that speak against God. How we use that and when we use that is a very, very important part, though, of living life. We can be pretty stupid in how we try to defend certain things that we think are wrong. But you will find that people in Scripture, Paul is probably our greatest example, spending most of his time in ministry with um, the Greek people who did not know about God at all and being able to not really tackle their belief system but just tell them, hey, there's a God that loves you. There's a God that wants to have a relationship with you. And all you have to do is say yes. In that process, uh, he avoided the conflict of argument, well, you're, my God's bigger than your God type concept, avoided that totally and just said, that God has something for you. Well, that's what God does in us. God doesn't go in and challenge you on other types of thinking. He wants you to just believe in him. Then once you're willing to take that step, then the alignment begins to take place. And ever so slowly, sometimes quickly for people, the alignment begins to happen where we follow God more closely in this. Well, as I mentioned, courage is mentioned a lot in the Bible um, if we were to go through all the references, we'd be here for several days going through all the scriptural references. But I do encourage you to take some time to go through um, that because, you know, fear is the thing that's going to hold us back the most. We have our own particular things that draw us into things we shouldn't be doing. And we have plenty to deal with that. But the truth is that we sometimes are really f afraid to take steps forward into areas that we should take steps forward into, and we resist it because we're afraid of what people will say. We're afraid of what uh, individuals will think about us. And so we have a tendency not to tackle some of the stuff. I, and, you know, the, 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 the truth is, that no matter how long you live with God, there's always going to be the next challenge. There's always going to be the next challenge that you have to somehow step across a barrier that you're afraid to step across. And as you, if you're willing to do that, then your maturity increases and what you will accomplish for the Lord in following him will increase. But as we resist or we don't follow challenging these barriers, these fearful barriers, then that's where we will stop in our growth. That's where we will stop. And if we become discouraged in that, we will actually decrease or fall away from the things that God had once really challenged and encouraged us with. Um, in verse... In verse uh, well, let me just say, first of all, you remember in Acts when it talks about the infilling of the Holy Spirit? What came out of that was this tremendous boldness and courage where, and probably the finest example is Peter. And Peter's this waffly type person. He's hot and fiery one moment and he's fearful and running away the next minute. Uh, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit changed him into this bold person that was able to speak clearly what God wanted him to speak and not be fearful of what people would think of him. Um, and so we see that as only one example of how the baptism of the Holy Spirit really helps us, where we really find that when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of us, and begins to have its influence, influence on our lives, it changes us from being less fearful, changes us so that we're less fearful and more bold into following the things that he has for us. Uh, moving back to 2 Timothy, I want to read verse 6. Uh, the, the, the scripture, the verse right before verse 7. 
Therefore, Paul says, I remind you to stir up the gift God uh, of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. So he starts it out before this verse 7, and he says, I want you to stir up the gift that God gave you. There's no indication that Timothy was having any particular moral problems at all. In fact, what was happening is probably Timothy, if you read uh, chapter 2 of 2 Timothy, you'll see that there was a lot of time spent on being courageous, not being fearful. The whole chapter is kind of angled that particular direction. Well, what Paul is saying, I want you to stir up. Another translation says, uh, fan into flame. Another translation says, rekindle or kindle up is a more tra- direct uh, Greek translation of it. Kindle up. And in, if you would just imagine, you have a fire that's been burning. Its coals have burnt down, but they're still red. And you want to get a flame going. What do you do? Well, what I would do is begin to blow on it and get some kindling there and and, uh, get the the coals to kind of ignite up and start the new kindling on fire. Well, that's the demonstration that that, uh, Paul is telling Timothy. Stir up or rekindle the flames of the gift that God has given you. All of us have been given gifts, and sometimes more dramatically than others, but all of us have the God-giving gifts that that we need to uh, make sure we keep hot, that we keep into flame. And so he says that. Um, the first part of our theme verse is, For God has not given you the spirit of fear. So the preface there is, you're fearful, and that's not from God. God didn't provide that. The only way that God's going to provide some type of barrier is that you he compels you to say or wish that you would not do something that is contrary to the will of God. That is the only thing that you're going to find. But in this, it's saying... He's talking to Timothy, and he's saying, Timothy, God didn't give you this spirit of fear that you're sensing right now. Uh, Timidity uh, is another word that is used there. I think the King James uses timidity. Um, But basically, it's a fear that whatever you do is going to be possibly wrong, that it's going to be misinterpreted by people, and it takes a certain boldness to just step out and do it. That we would just step out and that we would um, really um, follow with what God has for us. So God has not given us the spirit of fear, but instead, um, the but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We can just take it right to the bank that those three things are a direct assistance to battle against fear power love and of sound mind first of all when we're talking about power i think that that's the most direct illustration of what the holy spirit gives to us he gives us an internal strength that we didn't have before and that's the part that needs to be rekindled because it does go away if you don't use it often If you are backing off of fearful items, then you will have a sense that maybe you're drifting away from God, or maybe you might even sense that God's nowhere near you. Well, could it be possibly that you're in the wrong place, that you need to be in a slightly different place to get more from God? Well, um, so the, the sense of power is this confidence it's when we say, oh man, he is powerful or she has strength. Then we're talking about strength. We're talking about the ability to carry a lot, to pull or lift a lot, to put up with a lot. All of these are power words. 
And that is what the Holy Spirit will give us to be able to help us combat fear. The ability to just step out and be courageous. The ability to step out and be bold. As contrary to just falling into the sense that that um, I'm just going to, this is just too much. I, I can't deal with this fear. I'm going to just, I have to um, walk away from this. Power is the opposite of that. Of love. Love is one of those um, things in, in Scripture that I think in one place in First John, John says God is love. So that means the very essence of who God is, He is love. So if God is the most powerful entity that we can imagine in the universe, then that means that if He is love, that love and power go together. That there's a strong, deep, unseparating uh, aspect between love and power. John says in 1 John 4, 17 and 18, he says, Love has been perfected among us in this, that we should have boldness on the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not made, been made perfect in love. So the very the essence of what John is saying there, if you can have perfect love, you're not going to have fear. Uh, that doesn't, you know, I'm going to echo what Taylor Swift said. She said, there's always going to be fear out there there's always going to be fearful items but the more that we can approach it with power and love the less that it will have a hold and a restriction in our life and last of all and of a sound mind the sound mind is translated a couple different ways the NIV one of our more popular scriptures calls it self-discipline I, I, I struggle with that just a little bit, although I understand perfectly why it, that particular word has been used, uh, self-disciplined. The real uh, translation, which would not flow real well in today's English, would be wise discretion. That's really what it means. So sound mind kind of lends itself to, we've got to think the right way. We can't allow our minds just to go undisciplined in, uh, in odd directions, but that we really need to bring our mindset into subjection to the Holy Spirit, to God himself, to the work of Christ. So that when we are thinking, we don't have the stinking thinking, but we had godly thinking. We have good ways that we approach things. So self-discipline, yeah, you sort of get it, but it doesn't come from self. The, the impetus of it is the Holy Spirit, that it comes from God guiding us to good principles and us living up to those principles in this that causes wise discretion or a sound mind. The sound mind says that, he or she is not crazy. Look at that. They really kind of have thought this through and they know how to um, discipline their mind towards these things, not realizing that the Holy Spirit has really helped us kind of rule out the, the bad thinking that is in our mind. You, you know the scripture um, that, that things change with the transforming of your mind. So that whole concept that when we talk about that, that's one of the scriptures that you uh, get in Teen Challenge, that there are changes that take place because God transforms the way that we think. Well, anyway, that's what we're doing. That's what we did yesterday, and that's what we're to doing today. We're filming, and all the songs and um, the effort is towards trying to demonstrate a sense of fearness, uh, fearlessness. 
that when we are fearless, we don't let the negative things of the world, we don't allow the things around us that are negative to pull us down, but instead we carve a direction that is towards the good things of life and the godly things of life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for your part in Teen Challenge. And if you get a moment, would you pray uh, for the success of this event? Because although it's a fundraiser uh, event, we want it to also be something that impacts people's lives. To help them see a better part of what this world has and to a better part understand what God has in our lives. Well, God bless you, and you have a wonderful day. Let me close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your spirit and your love. We thank you that indeed you did not give us the spirit of fear, but that you gave us the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. We thank you for this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys.